All right. Can everybody hear, hear us? Is anybody out there? Is the chat live? So, I... Adele, are you already in the chat so I can give you mods real quick? Uh, I'm there and I... Can we can we wait for like a minute? I'm going to pour myself a glass of water. Yeah, well, we're already live, but we wait. Go. Oh, are we live? Fuck yeah, no, just go, 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 go. It's fine. It's fine. We can wait one minute longer for you. <laughs> Or can I, can can we chat? Can we can we wait for him? Yes. Like chat, can can we wait? Guitar <laughs> Siema. I don't know. Like guys, I'm sorry. Uh, that was unfortunate. Yeah, well, I mean, it's fine. Like the people are already trolling you, I guess. I can't understand, sadly. Unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, guys, uh, uh, I hope you are all enjoying already the show because um, you're already here and thank you all for tuning in and I see there are a lot of Polish people already here. So thanks for that, uh, for joining us here. Um, all right. So I guess uh, I should start because this is the first edition of the Puppets Dojo podcast. Like if you don't know me, I stream a lot, but usually I don't stream in English. Um, and I'm glad that I could join, uh, get these two experts together so we can do the first English podcast I've did, I've doing in such a long time, actually. And, uh, I, for here with me, uh, is one of my friends, Adele. Uh, he is also a writer. Uh, he is an extremely talented interviewer and, uh, Adele, what else can you tell about, about yourself? What's your, so... your take on oh. Europe? Like, tell us a bit about you. Oh, well, as far as I'm concerned, as far as Europe, I've been covering it for, well, since 2013, actually. So it's been going on for a while. So I'm actually going into my sixth season, if I'm not, no, seventh season. You're an old dog already, huh? Yeah. So yeah. I've been around for a while, let's just say that. Yeah, that's great. That's great. I mean, we know already ourselves like for a while now. I think we first met in, wait, sometime 2016. Could that be true? I don't know. I mean, we at least before. chatted a lot before that already, yeah. but in person, I think 2016. And uh, also, uh, I have one of the casters of the Ultra League. We have uh, a very, very impressive, talented analyst. But for me, the most impressive is because he's a Polish Monte Cristo. He is just as handsome as his knowledge is. Very impressive. So, uh, Tomasz, thank you for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. I've been more popular as the Polish Frost Green lady, but I... Well, say more. I, 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 I won't say that it's bad. Like, uh, I, well, you know what? I'm fine with that. I'm all right with that. And it's mostly yeah. because of my hair. But it's you know even better if people compare me to Frost. Like, yeah, I I will take that as a compliment uh, because she is an impressive person as well. And uh, but uh, but the hair is looking good on you as well. So you you kept your handsomeness. So so I'm actually looking like the 16 year old emo boy again. So <laughs> oh um, my god, you did yeah. not just say that. Oh, you did man. not do that. You know, uh, oh I mean, my I mean, god! I mean, I actually, I actually, I think, uh, I think it suits me. But if you look at pictures like from two years ago when I actually coached a team, I look exactly the same. Like it, it, you wouldn't see a difference, except that I'm, I'm maybe fatter. Um, you know, so. I'm getting the <laughs> middle age crisis. Yeah. <laughs> at, at the age of twenty two, that's why I dye my hair. No, oh, all right, all right. Yeah. Well, I was thinking doing the same, but uh, only with uh, letting my hair grow. You know, it didn't turn out as well as for you. But that's not the point here anyways. We're not a beauty podcast. We are not any kind of style and lifestyle podcast. We are here to talk about League of Legends, I guess. Because as far as I'm concerned, the leagues are starting already. And uh, yeah, we have only a couple of days left. So the LEC starts, right? Um, and I'm actually very excited this uh, this bit. Like, do you, before we start like talking in depth about the teams and trying to make some kind of position, uh, predictions of results, do you guys have a favorite roster so far? Like, do you have a favorite roster? I do. I'm um, I'm just gonna be honest with this one. Ooh, here it comes. Like misfits. Like, could could it be any other roster? Misfits roster is insane. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I, I think I think they smurfed the off season, right? Like yeah, they did. Like even if the roster doesn't pan out, if, it, yeah. if the roster doesn't work, I'm still a fan. Like getting gorillas, saws on the same. You've got my love, man. Man, dude. Like 
I really hope we see like uh, Febven at his best again because this team could insanely be an extremely interesting international team as well, right? So, so I, c I could imagine like if Misfits going well. I, to be honest, I'm gonna already out myself. Uh, I'm on the same page as you. Like, I'm the most hyped for Misfits. Like, I think this could be like the strongest team with the strongest potential here. Uh, but I won't say like they will do this from the start. Uh, and we're gonna talk a bit more about this, but I'm as as well as hyped uh, for it as you do. What about you, Adele? Are you a swell on the Misfits hype, hype train, or do you have a different favorite team? Well, to be honest, uh, this is the timeline for Misfits to take over. Yeah. Soon TM. But I also like Origins roster for some reason. Like, the way they build the roster is really, really good. If you look at how the players interact to one another, with one another. Yeah. I can, so I, I can see that. that um, I can see I'm that. really looking forward to that. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm more excited if we're gonna see Pekka at some point, or uh, if this time he is not gonna sub himself in. Let's hope nah, uh, yeah. it doesn't happen, but no. the meme is gonna keep uh, stay alive, I guess. Uh, but anyways, like, I think we have, for the first time in years, the most stacked Europe PN LCS ever. Like, not only did the change of names benefits for us. I think like the LC is a great name, to be honest. I think we have finally like a standalone version for us. But as well we have the strongest rosters ever. And did we have a notification sound that I can't explain where why it's here? Cool. Apparently we had a notification sound. Well uh never mind. I don't know where it comes. I'm sorry guys. If it happens again say uh, right in the chat. Anyways before we start talking uh if you have questions uh Use the hashtag PuppetsDojo on Twitter so we can read it easier. Feel free, obviously, to interact with us in the chat. But if we have, you have a more specific question, use the hashtag so it's easier for, for us to read, obviously. So, all right, guys, let's start. Uh, do, do you prefer going to Ross's one by one? Or... Yeah, yeah. All right. For sure. Yeah, uh, do you have all uh, Gamepedia open? Oh, Adele, can you send me uh, the link you sent over Twitter because I can open it in Discord? Oh, okay, yeah. Um, I... It's not over Twitter. It's no, no. Discord. If you can send me over DM on Twitter, because I can open on Discord. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Um, like, we could just go, like, over the list and Gamepedia. I don't know if how you put that in order. Okay, all right. Or do you prefer going uh, over the article from Adele? Okay, no, uh, we're we're taking Gamepedia uh, list uh, real quick because uh, I don't want to start with the best team. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, we're gonna start with Excel. Uh, to be to be fair. Uh, okay, which... so the only ten man roster. Right? Yeah, the only only ten man roster. So I'm gonna just uh, do a quick rundown of the players. We have Expect. We have Sendo. We have Kadro. We have Texer. We have Exile. We have Special. Inaxe. Jeskla. Kasing. Mystique and Fern Dog as a coach. So, so far, it's the first, uh, the only 10 man roster that we have. I think, like, can we call, still call the others with the Academy team is also a 10 man roster, or do we know if Exo is like a 10 man roster for the LEC team and uh, Academy team? From what they've said, I think it's the only announced 10 man roster. Okay, they've run all right. Using that pool shuffle. I don't know. Yeah, okay, I can I can see that. I can uh, can def definitely see that. Which is, a, in my opinion, uh, a good move. Um, because they have, as far as I'm concerned, only one import as well. Yeah, only one import uh, with expect. Which, I mean, we could almost call him European at this point. Because he played longer in Europe than he ever had in Korea. Um, yeah, but I don't want to, to take away anything from you. Who wants to start talking about the team? Like... Who wants to start running down? What do you think about the team? I would like to start as far as uh, Excel is concerned. Assuming sure. that the starting roster would be Xpec, Kedrol, Exile, Jeskla, and Cassing. Yeah. Assuming that, because like the way this roster would work would be if you had Kedrol take more of a, of a communication role. Mm hmm. And Exile actually focus more in game because, like, 
before that, in 2016, 2017, Exile was heavily involved in shot calling in UL. Okay. But sometimes he would kind of like forget about what's happening in lane and for some reason, oh, lane's not going too well anymore. Yeah. And Kadrol, actually the reason why, one of the reasons why he switched from mid to jungle was so that he could have more of an impact. Yeah. So I feel like the interaction between those two makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. if it goes that way. And then just have everyone just, you know, incrementally improve. I feel yeah. like there's some sense of direction in this team, to be honest. I don't know if they're going to, like, be at the top of the league or make it to the playoffs. But I definitely see that there's something going on. They're I not going to be utterly rubbish. I mean, we have to point out one thing first. They are actually the team that kept the most players from their uh, original roster. Because they kept, like, I think... Everyone from their EXO, uh, ESL UK roster, yeah, yeah. Let's literally everyone that played there before, they kept, which is in my opinion a very honorable thing to do, and they added players with that. Um, I can see the uh, I can see the the shot calling thing being a, a very very important because they added Kassing. And in my opinion, like uh, Kassing is one of the most underrated supports in uh, ULCS because he he has that leader type figure. Um, from the way uh, I spoke with him over many years, he developed that very well during like uh, his HK years, uh, even to, to the last year with Splice, uh, which was, I think, one of the reasons he was even at Splice, because he could be that shot calling and roaming support that the team really needed uh, at the start of the split. So I could, I could, see, uh, could see that being a thing and a trend, because if we see also Expect joining in, we have also a top laner that is uh, trained and vocal uh, on the OG2 style where everybody was very vocal and they didn't have a clear shot caller as well. But Tomas, what you know, do you think about EXO? Uh, I'm not so sold on the roster because I think you have no real star power. Like you're going mm -hmm. with Expect, Exile and Jeskla yeah. and which of those three is your star? Mm -hmm. Exile has proved that he is not a stable mid. Jeskla is a rookie and Expect while well, he has had some pretty decent tank, uh, I'm sorry, carry performances. Yeah. He's mostly been playing tanks in Europe, so I'm not really sure who's going to be the tar on this roster. And I'm also not so sort of, like, I think from what some of the players in the LCS or at least told me, mm -hmm. is the way he shot calls is really decent for a starting team, but as the team progresses, yeah, yeah. it gets sort of shallow. So I'm not sure if this will be the casting effect will it last for long? Yeah, well, I mean, technically, someone would have to add something on top to that, uh, which they I don't think they had uh, necessarily on Splice uh, throughout this year. I don't think they had another vocal uh, experienced voice there to add to that, uh, which could be one of the reasons. Because still, he's not a mechanically gifted support. He is Definitely. average uh, and does what he needs to do. And his strong side is actually uh, being there for the team. Uh, however, um, Expect is actually more of an aggressive solo queue type player, uh, and he was put on a, on on this role because of G two, in my opinion, yeah, which could be true. like uh, his breakout season as a star. I don't know. Um, so far, I think like the other, I think they're trying to invest a lot on more experienced and stable players and trade out with the with the newer and younger players that they had at Excel beforehand. And try to develop them as maybe the next star players because we could see a trend because they they kept for example sendo which was also a very um let's say r rock solid player that brought uh, some kind of depth and very very calmness to the team was also very experienced experience, uh shot caller which i think would be like what the team needs first right they might be like investing long term on their talent from uh, from EXO, which could maybe be a good thing, but also could turn out uh, as bad as it might look like right now. Um, so, to be fair, I, I can only ha agree with you guys. Uh, there is no real strong point in this team, like to say like we can bet on this player showing up so far. I think um, this, this would round up what we said, right? Or does anyone? Disagree. I just wanted Yeah. I just wanted to add that I like the Academy roster. I think the Tanman roster in this case could yeah. really work out because you have 
some of the really promising players. It's gonna sound like I'm tooting my own horn, but I'm gonna give a shout out to my boy Mystic here. He mm -hmm. has been an incredible performer the last couple of years here in Poland. Played incredibly well in Spain as well, and I think yeah. shot calling capabilities are insane. If he can transis transition from you know the ERL level to LEC level, he could be a major player. Maybe next split or next year. Yeah, like in looking at the roster, we can we can see they are aiming for that. I don't know too much about Ferndog to be to be honest. I don't know um, how good he is as a coach because I I just don't have any information on him. But he has been uh, at least working for some time now. He started in June two thousand sixteen, according to Gamepedia, and he coached like at least a lot of UK league and LVP. Which, in terms of getting experience, not that bad, to be fair. And he has been doing okay, I guess, in results. Uh, and has been always top 4, so... Except for uh, European Masters. So I guess this is actually very good for... For a... Uh, regional league coach, uh, to be honest. Uh, so yeah, we can be actually excited and see... Like, let's say, if they ex surprise us in the first weeks. I would say that. Otherwise, we see um, if they are really ready in the summer split. So, next, we have Schalke. We have Oduamne, Memento, Abedago, Upset, Ignar, and Dylan as a head coach now. So Who wants to start with this one? I guess you, because you, you were the one <laughs> not as hyped for this roster. You are the, the most questioning about this roster. No, I, I dislike this roster, you know, because uh, I feel like building around upset was a good idea. Mm -hmm. Obviously, you have a star player, a franchise player, to say even further. Yeah. And um, you get Memento, which I think is a really good, mm -hmm. not to say upgrade, but definitely a decent pickup. Yeah. And yeah. I love those two. But then you go with Abedage, and I have not been impressed with his play mm -hmm. in the regional league. And... Like, LEC is just going to be even harder. Yeah. Then you go with Odoamne, and I think he's had his worst competitive split last year. Mm. And on top of that, you add Ignar, and his play style is really shaky. And in Korea, it's been very visible that he can be abused very easily if you just ward your flanks and, you know, let him do his shenanigans. And honestly, I just don't see a lot of stability in the roster. I think this roster could work if the players show up, but if they don't... Uh, I just don't see, you know, a fallback. I don't I don't see a way this roster could get up from a slump. I can understand that. Um, like, what I'm missing the most... Um, like, Memento will have to step up as a leader again. Uh, which was a critical point last split again. Like, not that he didn't show up, but he needed someone with him uh, to really get the results out, out there. Which I kind of think is also missing in this team. Uh, Odoamne seemed for some time as a solid rock, but in my opinion, Odoamne is the kind of player you you want to let let him do his thing and you support him usually, and try to get the most out of him. Uh, but I agree with you on Abedaga. Um, I like I know him from uh, Yesel um, in Germany, like the German tournament. Uh, he was never a standout player. He was solid. He was fine. However, uh, he had actually an impressive year in uh, Turkey. He played like the last year in Turkey and actually got uh, good results, uh, ending first in summer uh, and uh, set, like losing the, super, uh, the finals is super massive. Uh, and also like they they won Rift Rivals, I guess. Uh, so I think like he had the best year of his career by far uh, last year. But I'm not even sure like he's actually necessary an upgrade to definitely. I don't actually compared to Nuke Dog's last split. I would say it's not because Nuke Dog played actually the best split of his life last year. Um, so I, I have my my doubts uh, in Abadaga because he he was never like the the star player they actually might need in this Chicago roster because building around upset is fine, but upset um, I I'm not entirely sure if he if he has experience enough to, to lead this team to constant wins. I don't think he's gonna be the leader figure to be honest. Uh talking about upset here. Yeah. Like yeah, you already have yeah you already have Odo Amne and Ignar. And to be honest also 
uh, something that was said previously about Memento. The thing with the Memento, like a bunch of times last year, Rocat would set him up as a win condition. Yeah. So if that could happen, that's also a possibility. Uh, Abadage, to be honest, I've watched some vods from his time in Turkey, and I was pretty impressed. He, I don't think he's going to be like yeah. a massive liability. But to be honest, you go from Nuke Duck to anyone not named Caps or Perks. Well, Perks went AD. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. well, you're kind of losing out a little bit. That's more mm -hmm. to Nuke Duck's credit. Yeah. yeah. But to be honest, I feel like we're sleeping on the fact that Schalke had been in a boot camp for a while. Mm -hmm. That you've yeah. had Dylan drive that boot camp after, like, he's been with Fnatic for a while. So... I think he's going to take a lot of those things into Schalke. Mm -hmm. And like the only worry that I have is maybe will Memento develop into what Schalke needs, which is just be a little more proactive in communication. But I think he was pretty decent at that last year. Fair, fair. So, I, I can understand that. Uh, I can definitely understand that. Uh, like the thing is um, that I really hope for a team uh, is that Memento actually manages to, to carry the scene. Uh, and I'm gonna explain why. Um, I, I know Memento for a long time now and have been following him closely. Um, I remember like being one of like doing the first interview with him when he first joined and seeing like the development over the splits with him. Like he was in the last two years, in my opinion, already one of the top three journalists in Europe. Um, we, we could like argue where exactly. But he has definitely been one of the journalists to watch. Uh, with this team, he might have the freedom uh, to do his thing. Which I really hope for him. Because uh, not necessarily he has been playing with the best teams, best rosters. Uh, or let's say when they had like still potential, they, the players didn't show up individually. Which definitely hurt him. And mostly when it comes to mid lane players. Because the last iteration of Team Rocket, not... All the time was very strong in the mid lane department. Uh, so if Abadaga really brings the performance he had in TCL last split and in general last year, uh, I couldn't I could see that team being a strong contender simply because we have uh, some talented uh, mechanical players, but as well uh, we have the players to step it up and init initiate for those players. But again, I think that's a roster uh, that you can abuse easily in terms of uh, playstyle. I think they are going to be very one-sided. Uh, I hope that Dylan uh, works on me out and proves me wrong, though. Uh, however, I, I doubt this is going to be in the spring split. Like, Schalke is so far not my favorite for top six so far. I think they could be in it. It's just going to be a bit of a contest between yeah. them and some other teams. I get. I understand. I understand. Like this was definitely was still one of the teams that I have more doubt about in terms of performance. I I, I have them between top six, and top seven, maybe. I don't know. It. I didn't hear all about the scrims, so I cannot say. Right, but right I don't really like the the roster anyway. Yeah. Like even if it works, I just don't like the way they built it. Sure. Sure. I mean, it has potential to grow off growth. This is, I think, the more important aspect uh, coming yeah, into this. That's true. Um, let's talk about Fnatic now. Uh, this is the next team. Obviously, we know four men of the rosters: uh, Buipo, Broxa, then we have Nemesis, the new one, uh, and Reckless, Hegusang, and obviously Young Buck. The thing I think we all are questioning is how good will Nemesis really show up, right? To be honest, I'm not too worried. This is pretty much a plug-and-play system. You're just putting a more team-oriented mid laner. And so, like, maybe you're going to have someone who's going to take less resources from time to time. So, if anything, maybe that broadens Fnatic's playbook. I get it. Sure. But, but you know, like, the thing is, I, we all can agree he has talent because he has been playing for a while in mid lines. And he has also showed that performance that we expect of a Fnatic mid laner in mid lions, right? Uh, so I guess, I guess, I guess technically, mechanically speaking, he could be the next Caps, so to say, right? He could be the next mechanical talented player that comes into Fnatic and just explodes with all the support, right? However, uh, we have to remember he's 19 years old. He has some experience and I think good experience because he played 
on a very good team uh, in Mad Lions. But again, uh, we're talking about the LC. This might change a lot of things, right? So um, you also worked uh, in Castle to, um, to European Masters, right, Tomasz? Uh, I did for some time, didn't I? I, I worked on the last one. I did don't think... I think I think maybe you you have like the most experience watching him play. Can what can you tell about Nemesis? Uh, okay, so from my experience, I think Nemesis is an extremely talented player mechanically, but I don't think he has the same X factor that Caps does. Because mm -hmm. what we have with Caps is that he can just take a game and carry it no matter what are the circumstances. Mm -hmm. While Nemesis, I think, is uh, more of a more how to put that play. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Less he's like, explosive. He's ex consistent yeah. and he's extremely solid but i think a lot will come down to him and broxa as a 2v2 like if they can dominate most of the 2v2 matchups i think he can be even a better mid laner than caps because he's gonna be consistent but i'm just not sure if he's gonna be the same explosive style explosive like, kind of a player he, but he, still yeah i think that nemesis is an, ex is an extremely talented player and i think it was the best choice for fnatic the only player from the rookies I would go for, the only other player I would go for is Humanoid because he's also extremely talented, mm -hmm. but those are the only players, basically. I see, I see. Like, yeah, to be, to be honest, like, um, and Adele can, can talk a bit more about this because one of the things uh, that Fnatic actually brings to the table is the ability to take a rookie and this experience and already well-rounded roster, right? Uh, Adele, I think you, you had a lot of uh, time um, and a lot of interviews with those players. Um, and uh, you can, uh, can share a bit about the experience on how the Fnatic players uh, think and uh, how they they developed over the year, less, uh, less year. So as far as development itself is concerned, I do think that Weepo still has some stuff to go through as far as development, just fine-tune his trade-in meter into like some acceptable range where it's like sometimes Broxa is not going to play around him. At least he's not going to get overly ganked as was uh, the case in the finals against IG. But as far as Bwipo is concerned, even if something bad happens, he's just going to recover. He's the type of player who just keeps pushing. So you don't have to worry about him. Um, and then you were talking earlier about Broxa and Nemesis, the Here's a problem the league is going to have to deal with. Broxa is pretty much a cheat code. Unfair. As a jungler. <laughs> no, legitimately. Like, if you need someone to set something up, this is like the ultimate cheat code. You have Broxa as a jungler. Okay, GG. Uh, next. Pretty much. Okay. Interesting. So yeah, so, yeah, no, it's like, it doesn't matter what uh, win condition you have. He's just going to adapt around it. It's so if option. you need something explosive... Mm -hmm. Well, he's just going to enable that, just as he enabled that, like, a while ago with the uh, caps, even. Sure, sure. I can I can see that. I can see that. Uh, because, definitely, Broxa was one of, one of the keys to win for Fnatic uh, this year. Uh, at least in the year European LCS, he was, like, in my opinion, the reason they, they kept successful overall, the independent of meta, because he was the rock that could always adapt. And, to be honest, I think, like, last year, he was the best general in Europe by far. Um, I don't think like uh, Maxor showed the performance we were used to from him, but as well like Broxa was also much more consistent. And like thinking about that, this might be even better for Fnatic because Fnatic uh, showed throughout the year that they don't care about what meta they play. They're gonna still play like let's farm up, let's play safe, let's punish, and just wait for the team fights because we're better there. Uh, and I think this like might be even better uh, as Thomas is saying that um, Nemesis might be more consistent than Caps because how Caps might be able to carry a game by himself, he was also sometimes the one, the reason they lost uh, all by himself. Um, and even if th this was far less than the other, uh, it was still an aspect that kept him down sometimes. Uh, because like he would take risks he shouldn't have taken. And we've seen like, this, at least in the World Championship, being exploited more because mid laners were simply on the level he plays or better, uh, so uh, I can I can see that being better for Fnatic overall. Uh, however, uh, I think he's gonna struggle with the competition in lane at first. Um, despite he being uh, mechanically strong, we 
cannot forget that the 2v2 game in the LCS, uh, sorry, I, LEC, uh, is, uh, is definitely more difficult to play than, uh, for example, the LVP, because people it will punish more as well. If he's mechanically gifted uh, and he got away with a lot of his mistakes, he might get punished now because he's going to play against the Caps, for example. So this is for me the big question mark. Can he already handle that level, or will we have to wait six weeks, maybe even the first ten, so we finally see an Nemesis on the level Fnatic might need them? I don't mind waiting as long as they make the playoffs. <laughs> I I guess we can pretty safe. Uh, it's pretty safe to say that we're gonna see Fnatic in the playoffs. With yeah, the I, roster. I think the roster is really good anyway. Like, yeah, any mid laner you put in this squad is gonna be decent. And um, honestly, I think Fnatic's gonna be. Well, worst case, we just put him on Galio. Yeah, sure. <laughs> or, or after Shock Rise, I mean, choose or, your poison. Or simply Casapea. I mean, I, he should be fine <laughs> with everyone with, the, with those. Uh, I mean, there are enough OP picks right now in the uh, meta that we can put him on and farm. Yeah, and I think Champion Pool is actually quite wide, so yeah. honestly, it should not be a problem for Fnatic to sort of adapt to the team style. So it might be a short-term downgrade, but potentially short-term, uh, long-term upgrade, to be honest. So let's see. Awesome. I, I'm, I'm excited uh, for this. Yeah, well, when we're talking about Fnatic uh, and we already talked about Cavs, we have to speak about G2 then next, uh, which is probably the most controversial roster. And to quote Alan here, um, he's expecting a lot of changes and swapping arounds with Cavs and Perks which could be a very interesting thing. Uh, and we have in G2 Esports currently Wonder, Yankos, Caps, Perks, Mickey X, and still grabs as a head coach. So who wants to start there? I'll go first. Uh, right. For you some reason. Yeah, for some reason, um, imagining maybe a situation where like Wonder, Caps, and Perks all swap planes, because why not? Okay, hello, this is kind of a crazy G2, but if things stay on the same side and like you don't have 9001 swaps going around just because of matchups or whatever you still have a really disgustingly strong roster and oh my god if the pieces fit together oh this is you don't look at the lec you look at world if the pieces fit together if perks Still keeps like his communication levels as he had in G2 in previous years in the mid lane. And then you add in caps as like an a uh, supplementary uh, information feeder. Mm -hmm. It's like you just upgraded your mid lane and maybe even your bottom lane, especially since Mickey is just. So it's like if Perks and Mickey can play in lanes, like okay, GG. Uh, this this is the team where it's like pretty much this is a fist. Hello. Oh, uh, is your wall not strong enough? Gone. That's yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. I see. I see. Um, this I'm is like afraid. the battering ram. Sorry. Uh, Go ahead. Uh, I'm oh just no, afraid. I was. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Oh, Thomas. Go. Yeah, go, this, go, this go. is awkward. Sorry. Uh... <laughs> it, it, it's fine. It's fine. It's. Um... It happens a lot over Discord. Well, we are an esports podcast. We can start yeah. a new show without some awkwardness. It's fine. Yeah, sure, for sure. It, I, um... I wrote in the script. Don't worry. Yes, yes, it's all in the script, guys. Yeah. Don't worry. What's planned? Um, go ahead. <laughs> but overall, I'm just afraid about the resource. Mm -hmm. Same. Because, like, even Yankos had moments where he was extremely resource hungry jungler and now you have cap perk even mickey x who was one of the most lane dominant supports but at the same time he expects a lot of attention going yeah. to the bot lane because you need words you need control so you can dominate the lane and you have three dominators and you have one jungler that really likes to go aggressive you can either build an ig Mm -hmm. and win worlds or mm -hmm. you can explode and go are you, are you gonna go for ng and yeah. just when it matters not show up and then and, and you go into the trash yeah. Yeah, so... yeah i i can see that uh like uh also i think that's what Fnatic said according to uh, to Ale uh loco x here in the chat um in the in their stream yeah now on sunday 
Um, because like the thing is about this G2 roster and why it's so dangerous, if everybody needs attention, nobody will get them, right? And uh, one of the problems they already showed uh, in the, on the past split is that this is actually a problem for them. While um, Wonder never, like from all of them, never needed much attention because he was the most consistent in the top lane and being individually the best in the team, in my opinion. We had games where Perks was also the best, but also sometimes not good enough uh, in the mid lane individually, uh, while the bot lane was like left out to dry most of the times. So do your things survive? Uh, we carry this on later. I still think Yankos and Mickey X might be a strong duo together because they are they play a very similar style. They go in, they initiate, and they go very aggressive. However, uh, as you all mentioned. And um, we have a very big resource problem. This only works if they can get the attention they need or they they can draft accordingly so they can play this. Which is the problem when you have caps and perks. Uh, because they're both carry type players. Um, so so you already have like two very carry type players in all lanes in this scenario. Because one is actually more of a carry type top laner rather than tank. The good thing though is the meta is shifting towards a uh, top lane tank oriented meta over uh, a more aggressive and carry style uh, top lane meta which uh, is uh, definitely a thing that could benefit them but again it will be a lot more of performance in the bot lane rather than anything else in my opinion i think something i would like to add also um regarding g2 the some things still worry me and that's most talking about What's going to happen when they're going to slum? Last year, it was not pretty at all. They crashed and burned during quarterfinals in the summer split. Yeah. And then it's like, I don't know, some pride dwelled in them, and then they just smashed their way to the semifinals at Worlds. And I was like, OK, uh, where was this G2 during the season? Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there's more context uh, in a conversation that I had with uh, Hjarnen, mm -hmm. or Hjarnen, I don't even know the correct pronunciation, sorry, uh, Peter, if you're even hearing this. But basically, Jankos and the bot lane had, uh, let's say, difficulties synchronizing their actions. Yeah. So maybe having perks there would help. Sure, sure. I can, I can, I can see that. Um, I, can, I can definitely see that. But one of the things that uh, I'm questioning the most because they had a lot more of communication problems uh, in terms of preparation. They they lost themselves in terms of preparation uh, at the end, by the end of the split and found themselves like four worlds, right? They made this impressive run where they actually knew their strengths and their weaknesses and could actually perform. Um, I really uh, question myself how much Grabs improved as a coach in this time because he, I think he sort of only got to know his team by the books at the end, like of the end of their words run, where he actually knew, okay, we have to do this, we have to do this so we can actually work as a team. I wonder if these changes came due to their uh, problems and not finding a replacement that worked or feel, felt right for them, uh, while also wanting to have caps in the mid lane for obvious reasons. Uh, so this is my big question mark. Like, did they solve the bigger problems that they had as a team from last year uh, after the words run? Or not because if they didn't it's not gonna matter if they have caps in the mid lane or person and they uh, as an adc and both them don't perform for various reasons if they can't like learn from their mistakes from the past because they are gonna show up again just probably worse because of the uh, resource problems maybe players not, sh uh, not showing up in the position we're expecting them to play better so are you seeing some shades of elements when Reckless went there? Ooh. So, sort of, I guess. Yeah. Like yeah. For me. But sure. the only thing I'm really hyped about is Yankos and Cups too. Like this Ooh, yeah. Paper, so oh yeah. Oh yeah. I I I can see that. I can see that. Even more uh if the meta continues to be more aggressive jungle meta. I can definitely see that. It's gonna be fun. Right uh, now, the mid jungle to V2 is so important in yeah. the meta, and it seems like it's gonna be the same for a while. Well, I and heard I heard next patch they might patch down the jungle influence though. So yes, yes. at least but week it, one. It it I think week one and week two possibly as well. Yeah. So 
for, for example, have Caps on Cassiopeia and Yankas on Lee Sin, whatever. This sounds like a crazy duo. Yeah, I uh, and definitely have for that. Uh, even if we think like uh, the Lucian is also meta, it could be also very fun for uh, to see like perks on a very uh, lane dominant AD carry as well. So we can really see are they able to show this off already or not. All right, moving on. Um, previously, before we we started talking here on live for you guys, we talked a little bit about how we were excited to see this Misfits roster play. Because we have Soas, Maxdor, Fabivan, Hansama, Gorilla, and Jess is taking now as uh, the head coach. And I think like everybody is excited for Gorilla, right? We have a uh, world class support player uh, joining in with Hansama, which could be very exciting because Hansama is definitely one of the most gifted AD carries we have in this league. But also, and to be fair, my hype is to see like, will we have like 2015 Fabivan, where he actually was destroying people in lane? Or we have, we're gonna see a very struggling uh, Fabivan, like we had him in the H2K. This is for me the question mark and most excited, but I'm gonna let you uh, guys talk a bit more about the roster. Tomas, what do you think? Okay, uh, I think the roster on paper sounds really decent. Yeah. Because you have the right mixture of new talent, of already developed talent, like players that can fill into many roles yeah. they need. For example, Soas or even Maxlor. Yeah. Both of them can go tanks, can go carries, can go early game, can go late game. They have a lot of potential in the way the game can be played. But I'm most excited about Gorilla. Mm -hmm. Because this guy has an, ex an exceptional game knowledge. His mechanics are really good as well. But the most important thing for me is that he is one of the most friendly Korean players I've ever had, I've, I've ever yeah. seen or heard. Like just read the interviews. This guy is insane. I, I love Gorilla as a personality, and I think it may be good for the team as well to oh, have someone like that. He is like that in person as well. Yes, 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 precisely. And so. uh, the most important thing is that the Misfits have already communicated that Hans Sama's game knowledge, in-game decisions are really poor, and Gorilla is there to help him with that. And I don't think there's a better support than a friendly guy that knows the game probably one of the best game knowledge sports in the whole scene like the world scene right yeah 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 i think this was one of the things that he said and Prey said in their last interviews after like they split up as a duo uh and i can definitely see that being a strong point because adding now that we have also soas which is probably one of the most experienced playing today uh, we we have like a very very experienced shot calling team, which uh, is something that was not necessarily sometimes the strongest point of Misfits. They had a communication going, but they had a very good early, maybe mid game. But when it comes to the later stages of the game, they always struggled, and this was one of the problems um, that they had last year and could be fixed now. Adele, what can you tell more about the storyline of Misfits? Okay, so let's go back to last year since you started that. To be honest, Misfits last year, their drafts were actually focused on like smash everything mid game or yeah. lose. So it was less of a Misfits problem and more of a, oh, we didn't get our stuff going the way we wanted to. Oh, well. Yeah. But the thing that I really want to, uh, well, there are two things that I want to highlight here. Okay. One, Misfits have solved the communication issue in the bot lane by bringing in Gorilla. Mind you that Gorilla is also fluent enough in English to be able to, like, you know, communicate, be conversational. Uh, I think so, because uh, well, if you don't, like, you were there as well for the King's Own press conferences at MSI. Yep. Yeah, and he was, like, the one uh, with, like, him and P Peanut were the most vocal ones in English. Most comfortable. I, from what I hear, Gorilla's English is actually pretty yeah. decent, but didn't like to speak English. Yeah. Previously, I think that was something Ashley Kang or Papa Smithy said at some point. I don't remember it, so don't yeah, Ashley, call Ashley said that. Yeah. Ashley got him yeah. on an interview, and I was pretty surprised to see how he handled it. To be honest, yeah, 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 like he he he's surprisingly good. Like, uh, so so I can see that working out. Uh, maybe like they will have maybe a shaky start because of that, but this should be uh sorting him uh, itself out very quickly. Mind you, I have. To continue on that uh, train of thought, sure. Go. Gorilla needs to become 
the emotional leader of this team because if things go downhill, Feber then last year in clutch when things went downhill, Kara disconnected. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Max Lore in 2017 in Team Rockcat had let's say a iffy time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, during the spring split before yeah. they researched. Soaz, he's still gonna be Soaz anyway. So that's just something you don't have to worry about. But basically, you want to play as five, and if two of your players might have issues, then I mean that could be problematic. That's why Gorilla is the most important sign in here. I can understand that, and I can see that because one thing we know for sure: Soaz might only show up for for the end of the split, right? As always, we're gonna have playoffs buff Soaz. That's the only thing we know for certain. And the rest will, will show itself, I guess. But I guess it's the team uh, we want to watch the most uh, for now in the spring sure. right? I think Soon. I think this is like the uh, the one team we can be sure either they will carry and be the favorite for the rest of the split, or maybe just hyped up during the off season. But there's one team that have has some players that. Are pretty hyped up, hyped up from the last split, split, and the team is Origin. They have players like Alfari, they have Colt, Nuke Duck, Patrick, and Miffy. Uh, Patrick was nuclear first uh, beforehand, right? Am I? Uh, sheriff. No, sheriff, sheriff. Not nuclear. Sheriff. Sheriff. Uh, yeah. Um, I am mistaken that. My bad. However, obviously we're talking about the year of the Nuke Duck. Uh, last year he had. The best. Another one. What? Another one. I, like, I, I, that's which... a good, big question, right? Like, is it like four year of nuke deck in a row? Fourth one, I think. And none of them were actually years of nuke deck. I mean, I like the best year he showed, like ever, was last year, right? Like in individual performance. I think he I agree. definitely had the best year last year. Uh, I think he was one of the big reasons Schalke did so well because he was consist consistently making uh, decisive plays. The, he was carrying games by himself very consistently and ha rarely didn't perform, uh, which uh, we usually know otherwise from Nuke Duck, despite being the Scream God, right? Um, so this is a, a thing I'm excited to see about because Code is a different player than uh, Amazing. Code is consistent, but as far as I'm concerned, I didn't feel like he is that um, best player or most experienced player as well. Like he was doing his thing, he was consistent. Like rarely had better or worse performance, which is a good thing, obviously, uh, because uh, amazing was a bit shakier in that aspect. But again, I don't think like he brings the same confidence in shot calling with him that might be needed for a nuke duck. I would like to disagree on this one, Mercy, okay. because I've tuned into a lot of things that the Unicorns of Love have done last year. And also to some things in free agency. And let's just say that Cold was one of the biggest free agents this year. And for good reason. His communication was off the charts. His shot calling was pretty solid, like, across the board. It's just that, well... UOL had too many things to take care of to, you know, reach that level. And even then you could see signs of brilliance here and there. But Cold was definitely their strongest player. And now you're surrounding him with Nuke Duck. You're giving him Mithy in the bot lane. Well, Patrick is going to just be like that mechanical yeah. god in the bot lane. Just like, hello, Sven. Oh, no, never mind. You're Patrick. Never mind. Still the same. And you're going to have Alfari, who's super solid in the top lane and a really good communicator as well. Sure. To be honest, the problem of this team is not going to be communication. It's just, will they work together? Yes or no? This is just a yes-no question. I think more it's a question if they will perform individually. Because, except for Nuke Duck, the other four players didn't impress me individually, to be fair, last year. And that's for me with the big question mark because that they are gonna work together as a team, I'm pretty sure about it because they have Giliotto as a team, uh, as the coach, right? And uh, I think this guy was one of the most impressive coaches last year because what they like he did with his players and how he, he managed to make them play 
was very impressive because he was able to notice in a very short amount of time what his team needs and make them work towards that goal uh, in a very, very constructed manner uh, and really exploit their strengths and while trying to overshadow their, their weaknesses very well. Uh, and I think the result that he got with Schalke was impressive either way because in my opinion last year Schalke wasn't even the best, like wasn't considered near to be the best team. Uh, or even top three material at the beginning of the split. So I think he he is a very key important part to this team, and if they all show up, I could see this team as a very impressive team. Like I could see them top three material right there easily, if they show up individually. Okay. I don't think that's going to be a problem mostly. Well, and I've seen something on chat which I disagree with. So what to did be you honest, see that, this uh, team, that Thomas is uh, not for the year for uh, of the Nuke Duck? No, 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 no. Uh, the Nuke Duck thing kind of reminds me of Harstam in Starcraft 2, but that's another topic. Okay. But um, Origin has three carry players. They don't have zero. Like Alfari, it really depends on what system you put them in. Because Alfari, Nuke Duck, Patrick actually have a solid reputation as carry players. If you put them, if you put them into that role, you know what Just I think it's funny because you said like they're all three carry players. For me, they are both flexible flip players. Yeah, exactly. Because, uh, because the um, they both show like they all show like that they can do both, right? Uh, I would prefer obviously Nuke Duck on a more aggressive pick because he can really show off his skills there. But Afori was the most flexible top laner that we've seen in 2017, for example. He played that literally everything his team needed. Uh, and I mean, Miffy can do both as well. And Patrick, you can put him on anything as well, and he will do at least a consistent performance. What I'm more curious about is how like Colt will fit in into this whole thing. Like for me, it's, this is the busy, bigger question mark. But I guess like they have options. And that's why I think Origin will do well, because they can adjust to the meta maybe better than any other team here. I love what the Fischer and the organization are doing with them, and yeah. uh, this is going to play a huge part, but overall, I'm not sold on cold. Like, I like the roster. I think Alfari is a very versatile player. I think Nuketuck is universal as well. Sheriff has some... Uh, sorry, Patrick has some really nice potential. Yeah. And Miffy is the shock caller. He's the father figure. Why would you need another one? I get sure. that sometimes you would like two points of views, but you have... Kyoto for that. Which, I uh, you, I uh, have to add, Alfari was late game shot caller on Misfits. Yeah, I know. I know. So, so and like, they should be I fine. I'd rather go for a maybe more mechanically gifted jungler than Cold because I've mm -hmm. never been a fan of him in that aspect. Mm -hmm. And while I think his comms are insane because that's what I've heard as well, Yeah. I just... I'm just not sold, you know? I'm not sure. saying I don't, like, I don't like this roster because I'm actually quite a fan of what they did with with it and what they're doing with their the uh, thought process behind it being behind yeah, yeah. i think it's very very shown yeah but i'm just afraid that cold might be a problem in the roster if the meta requires your jungler to be aggressive. which gifted. might be for the first two weeks right so precise but again and uh when talking about the next team uh we have a jungler that can do both he can be the very aggressive one. He can be a very crazy one. He can also just be consistent and support the team where he needs. And uh, we have Rook, uh, which is a team that I'm actually excited about because uh, we have Prophet, we have Kikis, we have Senkux, Hikyu, and fav our favorite What It. Uh, and I'm really excited to see this roster, to be honest, because while I think this might be a slow roster, uh, in terms of uh, success and results, I can see this roster become uh, one good roster in long term side. Uh, I think they have potential of growth and they have a lot of it. My question is, uh, will they be able to execute that? Uh, mm. Tomas, are you are you biased or can you can you give us your analytical opinion? No, no, I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> I'm, I'm not I'm as joking, biased. obviously. <laughs> you know what? It, Rob paid me to tell a compliment. Oh my Sorry. god. 
Uh, oh third God. of us. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, mm, I think the roster is actually sort of underrated. I don't think yeah. it's a top four roster sure. because uh, I think they like Harry potential. It's mm-hmm. obvious they do. Uh, Sankax and Hikyu were never star players. They were both sort of like support carry players. Maybe Sankax back in Splice era was uh, this sort of a carry player, but later on he was more of a Malzahar bot. And um, that was actually last year. Yeah. He played Malzahar, he played Galio. Those were the champions he did best on. And I'm worried about that. But I think Profit and Kikis are a top jungle jewel that is really being slept on. Yeah, I think those two could be insane. And if Wadid can keep up his uh, initiation, aggressive uh, team fighting prowess support style, they could probably upset some of the team. You know, I think it's uh, interesting that you mentioned Prophet because uh, when looking at him throughout the last year, I think he was one of the most potential growth players we had. Uh, unfortunately, uh, I don't think he showed up that growth. Maybe because the team didn't provide him with the tools needed. This might be different now. Uh, maybe like the, the top and jungle duo wasn't good enough, but could work now with Kikis. Because Kikis, I think Kikis brings something uh, to the team that Memento didn't. Uh, let's split. And it's that calm, more focused uh, leadership uh, that, is, that, like, that Kikis developed over the year. Uh, which might be a very huge key, key aspect, as you mentioned now. But Adele, what do you think? Will Sh- Senkex show up? Will Hikyu show up? So, I'd like to rewind and just say this team is actually really scary. Mind you that if they, like, if they rank around last positions, it means that the LEC is absolutely insanely strong. Not that they're weak. Yeah. Because, one, HQ and Profit, communication-wise, they were taking care of that in Rock Hat. That's true. And, yeah. And now you're adding Kikis and, like, his early game, you know, just his early game guidance. You're like, why? Stop it. And then you're adding Senkux, who's just going to play around whatever win condition you're, you're going to give him. As long as you make sure that Senkux is going to be confident, because I feel that he lost a little bit of confidence last year in Misfits. As long as you give him that confidence back just so that he can just pop off on carry champions, it's gonna be it's just gonna be a disgusting team, dude. I agree, I agree. And mind you, like going back to your question, if he's gonna perform or not, um allow me to talk about a substitute called Larson. If he doesn't perform, he's gonna be under pressure. Mm. Mm-hmm. Which is their white card for a summer split, though. He can play the spring split. Yeah, but... Uh, which, I can agree. I'm actually, like, I think everybody's hyped to see Larson play. Uh, because he was also one of the players that people looked uh, looked at when uh, building their rosters. If you're excited about Larson, please watch Ultra Liga. Oh, let's see, let's see. Shout out to my league. Yeah, so, so, so you're an expert on Larson, right? <laughs> Will be. Well, wait, did he play already? In, like, you had already the first week, right? No. He no. popped off in uh, at H2K. Even yeah. when they lost, he was absolutely popping off. He was a substitute for a while at uh, H2K last year. Uh, to, to be fair, like, I'm actually... Uh, I like the rogue uh, it went to the Ultra Liga because I think Polish players are much more underrated than they should be. Because, actually, if we look at Denmark, we have a lot of talented players... But we should also recognize that Poland also produced a lot of high quality players as well, which has been going a lot of under the radar and people are picking up now, which is very interesting to be fair. So actually, I really, really want to see uh, him play, but I guess we have to wait for that. So far, I really hope I'm wrong to see that Rogue will be a, a more under, um, t- like more about f- fifth to seventh place. I really hope to be wrong because I actually could see some uh, solid potential there and like this is one of the teams that that I see at the underdog potential to upset a lot of top teams when yes, they least definitely. expect and this might be the key to win this split but the latest I think next split they should be a more top tier contender uh, than any uh, anyone might expect speaking about underdogs 
we we come to the newest team, I would say, in terms of names. Maybe as an organization, one of the oldest. But we see a lot of players not only returning, but we see also a few new names. Funny enough, another Polish player <laughs> uh, is in there. Uh, but we see the return of Werlip, we see Selfmade, we see Pyrene, Crouchout Dreams, and Sheepy coaching under SK Gaming. Uh, and I think a lot of people in the chat were already asking about this team, what we think, because this is uh, considerably the newest and youngest our let's say more least experienced team that we have this year. Um, what do you what do you want to say first about Selfmade? Because in my opinion, he was one of the the players that loved watching in the LVP. Uh, he was for me uh, one of the most talented players there, and I could imagine him really doing well in the uh, the LEC personally. However, I'm questioning the whole team all around. I think. It could work out, but I, for me, it's one of the weaker teams so far. But Tomas, what can you tell us about this pickup at least? Okay, so I'm gonna start off with a minute about the team because yeah. I want to sort of draw some context yeah. around itself, mate. I hate the team. <laughs> I'm probably one of the most Korean biased people, per person ever. Like, I love Korea, this favorite region. I've watched this for five or six years now so basically almost since the inception and i think pyrian and dreams are a tragically mm -hmm. poor 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 pickups i hate both of them like i i think pyrian in an a was just absolute garbage and in kt he was serviceable which could mean that it's gonna be deep in europe but still that's not an import that you want to keep i feel like yeah. that's more of a field player until you get better and dreams he was, for me, he was very bad in yeah. Mysterious Monkeys. The challenger level, he was also not the best support. So why would you not go for a European support? Why would you not develop talent? Instead, you get two bad imports. Hate that. But going, like, a part of that, I think Crown Shot is a decent AD carry, deserved shot. I think Selfmate mm -hmm. could, the next, he could be the breakout jungler. But we'll see how he'll perform without assist because I think... Their duo was a big factor to why both of them performed so well. So yeah. this is the case for both of them, where we do not know whether or not they will perform as well as they did LVP or SLO. Sorry, and which is a good uh, aspect to talk about because Werlib was already an S uh, LCS player before, right? And do you think like I I'm not too sure like he he performed definitely well, consistently well over the years in the LVP SLO. But do you think like he is on a top tier level to contest with other top laners in the LC? I I don't think so. Like for me, we're like be mid tier. Uh, yeah. I would not call him a really good top. But coming back to self mate for a for a second, um the problem I have with him is that he declined previous LEC offers or LCS offers back at time because he wanted to play with Nemeth. Their synergy was an important factor. And, um, it's possible that it's gonna be a problem, but still, if I was to pick one player to be hyped about, definitely self, because this guy has an insane potential and is very good mechanic. Like he's been a good mechanic player in Poland. He developed game sense and pathing knowledge in, in Spain. He really learned a lot. His improvement yeah. is massive, but you know, LC is still another big size of shoes. Feel. Yeah, no, I definitely agree. Uh, Adele, what can you say about this? This is me? such a hit or miss team. And mind you, like, you brought some good points to some extent about dreams. Pyrian, I'm under the impression, is a really solid pickup, but is he the pickup that SK needs? Can he speak English in a decent enough way to be able to interact with Selfmate? Um, I, can, case... I can add something to that because uh, what many people don't know, but I actually worked with Dreams uh, on the Misfits qualifying roster in 2016 for the Challenger series. And he actually speaks decent English. Uh, the reason he was there in the first place was because his English was good, actually. And uh, he was, at the time, a very inexperienced player. But since then, he played already two years in the various teams, um, which might add a lot. Like, he was an easy 
play like was easy to work with him and he was hard working he was just like very new and unexperienced at the time and needed just more time and was like let's say ready at the time which might have changed so, so you're telling me that SK's communication will definitely have to go through dreams in order to enable Perian and self-made at the same time, which mm, might might be but might I think, be the thing, yeah. Yeah, but I think to be honest, Perian had some experience playing in the he can do basic communication, just enough to be like, okay, I'm going here, I'm doing this. Just yeah. to say, okay, Roger that. So but that's so many what ifs that I'm not sold. Even though, like, they have the core of Mad Lions, which was uh, kind of popping off in scrims against LCS teams I heard last year. But uh, it's like, to be fair, I don't know. Uh, like, what I'm missing more for self made is that really high carry potential mid laner, which Pyre yeah. and it's not. Uh, just... And uh, like, he had Nemesis and Whirlip. Like, he could just live on the top side and do his thing. He had pressure on top lane, and he had pressure on mid lane at all times in uh, the LVP, which was one of the reasons he could abuse his aggressive style and like punish the other jungler a lot more, which uh, I'm not too sure he's going to be able to do with this roster. But again, uh, we have to take in consideration that Pyrean spent some time in the SKT, right? He might develop a lot of new skills that we might not see yet, but might be there. And if his English is well enough so they can communicate, sure, why not? I mean, I can see that working. However, I wouldn't say, like, this is my favorite team from all of them. Like, for me, it's still, on paper, they look weak. Yeah, for me. It's just tricky to implement something working in this dynamic. Yeah. They have. Which I should use as a disclaimer. Too. Uh, sorry for interrupting you, uh, that predictions like that are super difficult to make. Like, we can only say from previous experiences and our knowledge about the players how they might perform. So if we don't have too much information, uh, even as they could work together, uh, like in this scenario, and we don't know too much about the, the players because of various reasons, uh, it's super hard to make a prediction. Like... So just to take in consideration there. I don't continue, please. Yeah. So and like I'll just piggyback on your disclaimer also. Uh you could definitely hear something said right and that will happen, but then maybe another prediction within this video will be slightly off just because we're missing a parameter, which in SK I would say quite a lot is foggy at best. Yeah. Definitely agree there. And so, like, as far as Perian is concerned, I'm like, he, uh, like, last year in SKT, he was good when, like, SKT didn't need to play too much around mid. But then again, like, I think there was one game where he went 09 or 06 on LeBlanc, and pretty. If I'm not mistaken, it was just horrible to watch. Yeah. So I'm like, that type of champion? Maybe not. So maybe there's some meta dependence here as well. Could be. As I said before, I'm not a fan of this roster. And, um, I'm I'm not creating. Yeah, yeah. No, no. Sure. I I think we're on the same page. Which brings us to the almost the last team that we have to talk about today, and one that people want to talk also in the chat. We need to talk now about splice. With that, we have to talk about Vichy Chachi, Xerxa, Humanoid, Kobe. And Norse Karen, and as a coach, here is Diruk, but I think Peter turns two with them, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't. I think Diruk worked with them already. Last last split. I'm not too he sure now. Yeah, but he did, yep. right? So now officially he is uh, the frontman according to the Gamepedia page. Uh, yeah. What can you guys tell me about uh, Splice? This is my dark. What? This is my dark horse for oh, the whole week, see. because I think I think the roster seems super strong at first, but I don't see a lot of problems with it. I've heard they weren't doing well in scrims, uh, which is I think, but it has a nice mixture of young talent, 
compared with uh, nice older, uh, nice uh, more experienced players. Mm. What I'm afraid about is only the shot calling, because okay. I feel like the only players could be Pope, like Zerx, you're busy Chachi, but from what I hear, Zerx is pretty quiet in game. Mm -hmm. Could be a problem. And uh, Humanoid, he's pretty vocal. We've had him in Ultra Liga for three months. He's insane. Like, mechanics are on another level, but he sometimes goes too far. And if that happens, this could be a problem. Could be the next Caps in that regard. <laughs> but he could also get scared, you know? It's the LEC. Could maybe play uh, a little bit of a chicken game. In that case, uh, that could be a problem. But anyway, I'm a fan of this roster. I think this is an interesting roster, and they're definitely my dark. Okay, apparently my humor was loud. I'm sorry. Conti no, con continue. It's fine. No, I'm fine. I'm fine. Like, yeah. they're, they're potentially they could reach top four for me. So, what do you guys? I think, for one, they have one of the best coaching staffs in Europe. Flat. So just that, even if you had like absolute garbage tier players, you're like, okay, uh, Splice are definitely going to be okay to reach the playoffs in some split just because of their coaching staff. Yeah. If they're willing, to, if the players are willing to be coached. They're going to be in the playoffs in the summer split. But then again, you have some pretty strong players. Also, Xerxes actually stuck. So this is not going to be the same Xerxes that Chachi played with in Unicorns of Love in 2017. Yeah. This is yeah. going to be a more proactive Xerxes. And you're telling me that humanoids can communicate as well? The only worry then that you have is... How much is the bottom lane going to communicate during laning phase? And so maybe a target for Splice's um, development would be to actually get Norskelen to like take that one over. Because Norskelen last year was just facilitating game plan. He had the shot caller near him, so there was that. But now, if he has to step up as far as communication is concerned just to allow Kobe to pop off, Okay, they may struggle a little bit, but then it's going to be spliced. They're going to be fine, and maybe they're going to reach playoffs even with Rogue's lineup being maybe my sixth place favorite. But then again, splice is a pretty scary one here. So, yeah, I, I can I can understand that. I can understand that. Like, my bigger problem is um, the carry potential. To be fair. Uh, while I can I can see Humanoid becoming that carry, uh, he might have still a lot of problems individually against the other mid laners, laners as well. Uh, and I don't think like Xerxes, Kobe, or Chachi are necessarily the players to step up in this point. Like these, they are in my opinion more the consistent players that play very well or solid over a long uh, over a long period of games. Rather than be be the guys that will carry a team every single game, in my opinion. However, okay. I can I can see uh, Humo accepting that void. However, I have a qu big question mark if he is already ready for that. And the level okay. of DLC. Yeah, go ahead. My hot, my hot, my my hot take. Um, uh, if Humanoid can one v one decently in the LC. I think this will enable Xerxes to be carry alongside him. I think this is potentially one of the best mid lane jungle duos if both players play to their capabilities. Mm -hmm. Because sure. I, I'm not saying they're going to overperform. I'm saying if Humanoid and Xerxes perform to their standards, I think they can be one of the legit best duos in Europe. And I think this could carry the team because, you know, you have then you have Vizichachi as the, you know, engage, teleport, flying weird shenanigans top laner you have yeah. kobe the late game carry and you have northkern possibly one of the most mm, emotionally influential but also playmaking very good at playmaking support so I, I like the roster yeah yeah it has potential i am up in for sure let's but... not forget about chachi pop okay all right poppy well let's Bring it to the end and talk about the last team we have to talk on this list. And it's Invitality with Cabochard, Mowgli, 
Jizuke, Attila, Jack Crow, and Studio Yamato Ganon as a coach. So, what do you guys think about the addition of Mowgli to the lineup? Mm. I'm not sure. <laughs> uh, you know, as I said previously, I'm a massive fanboy of Korea, and uh, well, I've never been so hot on imports. I think Mowgli could actually be the one to work out because he's been a very versatile player on Africa Freak. And um, he stepped into Spirit's shoes pretty well when Spirit has had some of his worst times. Yeah. And I think this could be an important factor mm -hmm. because uh, the important thing here is that he played Zag very well, but he also played Graves or, or, or like aggressive Gragas with Predator very well. Yeah. So this shows his capability to play yeah. different styles. But yeah. What helped Vitality was Kikis' uh, game knowledge and his charisma, because Kikis is a very charismatic guy, yeah. I know really well, and I can say that he's a born leader. Yeah. And I'm not sure Mowgli can do that, because he's a very young player, and he's, from what I hear, he's pretty shy. So this could be a problem. Um, I don't know. They have to redefine themselves. And if they can do that, I think this could be a top two roster. If they fail, I think they they're going to struggle to find their own style, their own identity. I can see that. Um, I think my only problem with Kicks in the roster, uh, especially, was that I think they, they found like their cap, like they couldn't improve anymore. Uh, because like they, they found like their style, they found like how to play it, and already maximized it like at where it's time, right? While we still doubted that they, they won't show up, and they were more creative than we thought they would be, and were able to successfully snowball out of an early game. I think they struggled overall, like in certain aspects when it came to adaptation towards a long, uh, later stage of the game, which I think they are trying to solve with Mowgli, like by bringing, as we mentioned already, variations of styles that they definitely struggle at uh, last year overall, and maybe even more uh, mechanically gifted player to abuse more in the other game which was Vitality over the most amount of last year. Like, let's abuse the early game and really uh, snowball out of it. This this is what I see, at least. Uh, Adele, what's, what do, do you see there? In so roster? what do I see in Vitality? So as far as their mid-late game shot calling, I don't think much will change unless Mowgli can speak English and can speak it at a conversational level. Mm -hmm. This is a question mark. Assuming that he does not, they still have Jack Troll and Kabochar to take care of that. And Kabochar was actually their in-game leader last year. Mm -hmm. So on that front, not much is going to change. I'm just more worried, can Mowgli communicate efficiently in the early game as well as Kikis was? Sure. So can they actually take over in the early game? Or maybe does he need to... Well. He will definitely need to on the long run, especially if Vitality still smurfs in uh, in Europe and then gets to world. But I'm more worried, can Mowgli communicate with this? If he can, uh, yeah, no, uh, this is not going to be a fair team to face. I can... If he cannot, slightly more balanced. Mm -hmm, sure. Can see that. Can see that. I have another uh, question about the roster. Like... Oh. Even if they find their style, even if Mowgli can fit in Kikis' shoes in the early game, if Mowgli turns out to be a, an English speaker. Yeah. What about Attila and Jack? Because I feel like they have been performing really well as split, and I'm not sure if they weren't overperforming. Like, is can they keep up the form? Because their first split was not as good. Sure. Jizuke had some really bad moments as well. I don't think the roster has consistency. Kiki's brought that consistency in the early game. Can Mowgli do that? This is another question. Um, can I answer uh, this one? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sure, go sure. ahead. Okay, so uh, do you remember Caps in 2017, how inconsistent he was? Yeah, yeah, I do. Okay, then uh, multiply that by three. Yeah. <laughs> Attila, Jack Troll, and Jizuke. Yeah, you had three rookies, and yet Vitality was popping off left, right, and center. That's I true. think we should just give them the benefit of the doubt. They're still developing. 
Yeah, I have. Um, I actually have vitality really high, but I'm yeah, just same. you know, same um, posing the question because I'm afraid they may fail. Oh yeah. I like. I think they solved a lot of those issues um, by the end of the summer split already. To be fair, like I feel they uh, they learned, or at least let's say Jizuka learned to play more to the towards the team uh, rather than to win lane, uh, which was one of the biggest bigger mistakes he constantly did. Like would go for aggressive plays or risky plays in mid lane, and with that lose the pressure they so needed for the bot lane. Um, and despite like Atala shown off as a very talented, gifted mechanic uh, carry, he still definitely needed some improvements in the team fight uh, department. Like his position. Holy was, shit. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like we're we're talking like they they needed like that year of experience, which I think that words run in the end showed that they overall understood what are the strengths and weaknesses and started polishing them by the end which obviously is a question if Mowgli like and that's the my my only problem with the, the lineup was changing the jungler the right idea and I I believe that Yamato uh, knows really well his team uh, and was probably the key factor that they actually worked out uh, well at the end however um, I think it's either uh, like gonna be like the best thing ever or the worst thing ever. This decision to uh, to change the jungler uh, for the split. I think he didn't have the privilege to make that decision because it was Kikis. Yes. Okay. Making the decision to join Rogue. Okay. Uh, all right. All right. From what I hear, they didn't agree on financial and like overall contract uh, 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 customs. Okay, okay, I can understand that. Yeah, well, then yeah, then I think he didn't have a choice and actually found a decent pickup for the team then. A guy they met because yes. they played a lot with Afrika Freaks during the summer they, boot camp. And I don't know if they played house. a lot. Yeah, they were in the house. So it's like okay. they're familiar with Mowgli already. All right, all right. Before they team up. It's just, I don't know... If Mowgli will translate that in game, but that's the only thing that I'm having a question mark on. But it's an already well informed pickup. Yeah. Yeah, well, I think um, this rounds up pretty well uh, our predictions. Can we try to make somehow a prediction list where, I think, where we think they're all going to end up? Like, maybe quick. just top three, or do we go for a top ten? List? Let's go top six. L let's go All top right. six. I think I think this is easier because, our, like, we could go top ten because I think on the bottom three we're we're pretty much on the same page. Okay. Uh, I think. Um. So, like, towards our talk here, I I think we all agreed on SK gaming being the weakest. Potentially the weakest, as far as I'm concerned. Yes, so potentially, would, would, would we see like they are the tenth? Depends or, on the meta. Or do you feel like EXO or no, no, no? I'm, I'm, I'm all in. Yeah, I'm pretty much the same actually. Yeah, um, I, I feel like they're among the weakest. Uh, they're the weakest, like uh, SK that is, and then excel over it. All right. But yeah, it's. Same for me. Could be completely different when you see them on the rift in this meta, and maybe like we did completely neglect the factor, and all of a sudden these guys are actually smurfing in the LEC out of nowhere. It's really hard to judge, but yeah. I'm yeah. just gonna put it out. For me, top one is gonna be Fnatic, mm -hmm. and uh, the top two spot is gonna be around. Uh, maybe let's put it another way: top one Fnatic, mm -hmm. then a a tier. G2 Misfits and Vitality fighting for mm -hmm. the rest of the top four yeah. spots. Yeah. And then I have uh, Origin, Rogue, and Splice sort of in the same uh, same tier. Maybe Rogue half step below the other two. Like, I, I cannot decide which of these rosters will yeah, work yeah. because I have no idea. It's it's yeah. too hard to tell. Yeah, I can, I can see that. Yeah, I would agree with the top four. I would also like to see uh, Rook being slightly weaker, but also top six material. Yeah, yeah. While uh, for me, like EXO, SK Gaming, and Chalker are amongst the f weakers, weaker yeah. side of the uh, of the roster. While I also have still my doubts on Splice completely, 
but uh, I would definitely agree on the top four there. What about you? Uh, actually, I would put Origin in my top. Instead of Misfits? Instead of... Hold on. So it's... G2. Oh, instead of Vitality. Instead oh, okay. of Vitality. Okay, that's yeah. interesting. I... So, like, I, I would see that. maybe, like, early on, well, maybe Fnatic is going to struggle a little and, like, a little behind the, uh, those other teams. But that's if everyone's performing at their best case scenario, you'd have Misfits G2. Best case scenario, let me repeat that. Misfits G2, Origin, Fnatic, Vitality, and then a uh, bloodbath between Rogue and uh, Schalke and Ulfiel, and Splice. Like a bloodbath for sixth place. But worst case scenario, I would actually see a, a really outlandish scenario where Misfits just doesn't make the playoffs. That's... If things really go downhill. Okay. Okay. I can. Yeah, I, I, I can see see what where you're going for. But for me, yeah. like the bigger question mark is uh, which of those three teams will actually grab the last spot, and those are Rogue, Origin, and um, Splice. I agree. Like for me, it's pretty safe to say like that Fnatic G two. Misfits and Vitality will be on amongst top top six, and then like the last few spots will be between uh, SK Game, you know, sorry, uh, Rook, Origin, Splice, and one of those three teams will probably uh, stay out of it. And this is my bigger question: which one of those? Because while the one seems uh, more safe to bet, the other one has the highest potential, and the one could be a surprise for anyone. Uh, the we have all three there. Uh, well, I think the other ones are pretty sa uh, more safer to say that they're gonna stay out of it, like alone by the uh, by the predictions from results last split and last year overall. However, uh, again, the disclaimer: those are predictions around names, ar around experience from past splits. Those things can change very rapidly, and we see SK Gaming destroying everyone. For example, in the first week, second week again but they could then turn off and just like go f uh, not win any, a single game anymore as well as they could win the whole split so reminds me of giants last year <laughs> yeah exactly exactly that's a good example or even like h2k i don't think anybody thought it's gonna be like that that bad with h2k roster last year yeah or that h2k would bounce back completely during the springs for example so this is just a short little disclaimer there, but I think with that we come to an end. We managed to talk and predict somehow while the split, so I guess we're all calling Fnatic first. But but what, what what's the favorite logo? Just to to clear it off at the end, what's the best logo of the LC? Who wins this battle? Um, I'm gonna go with um, Rogue. Oh yeah. Okay, Rogue and Misfits are smurf tier as far as logos are concerned. Well, I, I'm i gonna go with uh, Fnatic because I'm a base fanboy, I guess. Kappa. Bias! <laughs> I actually liked, uh, liked that one. However, yeah, guys, uh, this is it uh, for today. Thanks for tuning okay. in for the first Puppets Dojo. Do you guys want to give any shoutouts before I close yeah. it out? Yeah, Polish fans have been asking me to say one thing for the whole stream, so I'm just gonna say it. Go. So they, they let you go. Pozdro Tisa. Uh, okay, I hope, I hope you didn't uh, insult me. Um, no, no, I, I did not insult anyone. It's uh, it's just... <laughs> I'm kidding. I, I, I'm just kidding. Adele. Uh, <laughs> to the LAC Discord channel, which has been, well, which I've been uh, interacting with a lot as of late. And also to Ashley, who's given me like uh, a bit of information here and there as far as some of the players coming in, for example, Gorilla, and also to ev uh, anyone who follows me on Twitter at right. Adele Weatherby. Yeah, guys, leave them obviously a follow if you don't know them already. And yeah, we're gonna be back next week with another Pub Studio podcast. Maybe we find if other guests, maybe these two come back because I love them anyways. Uh, but as well, I hope you come to an end, and especially to the, all the Polish people that came because of Tomasz. Thank you for ju uh, joining us. Uh, it was a pleasure with all of you, and uh, I guess see you next time. Cheers.
Cheers. Cheers.